The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Welcome, guys, and happy Wednesday. We're coming to you live from Salem, New Hampshire for a change. And today we are going to talk about immune systems and dogs. But first, we're going to start with the quirky tip of the day. And I just wanted to point out a part of this quirky tip is that there's a respiratory disease outbreak in New England right now. New England is struggling. And this is out from uh, Cornell University. I'm just going to read. There's just some tips here on what to watch out for to take care of your dog. I have run into this. And this is this article came out between last podcast and this week. So it's a, it's a, a, hot pretty, topic. a pretty fresh thing. And um, this is kind of, they're describing it as a cross between kennel cough and pneumonia. So, and I've even heard it referred to as canine COVID. But... That sounds a little extreme. Um, here's some tips. They're saying um, they're recommending dog owners uh, remain aware of the following situations that they may increase your dog's risk of contracting this disease. One, if your dog attends daycare, goes to a groomer, dog training classes in groups, dog parks, or other situations where there's uh, groups of dogs together, be proactive asking about any recent cases of respiratory disease. Two, Respiratory diseases are spread through the direct dog-to-dog contact or through exposure from water droplets created by coughing or sneezing. These droplets can also contaminate objects such as bowls, toys, and even human hands. And I've been using, now I'm back to using my um, antibacterial hand sanitizer. hand sanitizer in between going to different homes. And, and I'm asking and informing people about what's going on here just to, so that they know about it. Uh, Three, if your dog's experiencing any signs of illness, including coughing, sneezing, labored breathing, or ocular or nasal discharge, and particularly if your dog is also lethargic and has decreased appetite, be sure to contact your vet. Do not expose your dog to other dogs until you are certain your dog is not contagious. And four, keep your dog up to date on vaccinations recommended by your veterinarian. Be especially careful if you have a puppy that is not fully vaccinated or if you have a senior dog that may have a weakened immune system. Yeah. So that's something to just be aware of if you're in the Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, maybe even, you know, parts of New York at this point. Yeah, but it's the just most, a, it's a bug that's going around. We want to be aware of these things. The most frequent or the I think the first outbreaks were in New Hampshire, but now it's kind of spreading out to these surrounding states and Scott and I don't know enough about this specific issue yet. I have a call into my eastern vet. I will talk to my Western vet, who is actually a New Hampshire vet, and I will get more information, but I, we're not ready to report on a podcast about it because we don't have enough information. It's just kind of come out. But we want to talk about immune support because that's when you start thinking of this kind of situation, right? Like, oh my gosh, there's a new respiratory virus. There's this, that, and the other. And one thing I do want to say is I've gotten many emails from various daycares, um, training facilities. There's not a ton of like fly ball tournament kind of things in New Hampshire, but this would be another type of situation where all these dogs are coming together, a lot of dogs in an inside area that people are saying like, if you can keep your dogs at home, because the quicker that we don't allow this to spread and don't allow it to escalate, the better. And yes, we always have kettle cough. And I understand that dogs get upper respiratory illnesses a lot of times. And I've had dogs come in before with supposed kennel cough, but there was still, you know, nose drainage or eye drainage. There was definitely something going on there and they needed doxy. So I'm going to bring the dog, obviously, to the vet with that. But if we have a dog that even so much as coughs once that we're caring for that isn't our own dog, we're going to isolate that dog. This is just like similar procedures that we do all the time. So we want to kind of impart some of that onto you guys because we're just used to living this way. But if you have an older dog or you have a dog that does live in, you know, New Hampshire in a high populated dog area or the surrounding states, we're going to give you guys some things to think about. So let's talk about ourselves. What are things that we do for ourselves for our own immune systems? You mean not dogs, just yeah. for humans? Yeah, just for us. Like, well, what, do, getting, what do you do? Like, what, like we, we're pretty big on immune systems in our house in general, humans and dogs. Well, I, the basics of getting a good night's sleep, trying to have uh, good sleep patterns, eating a healthy diet, um, 
trying to limit processed foods and heavy sugars and a lot of crap. Uh, we neither one of us party heavily. We're not drinking a lot and doing things that are really knocking or knocking us down. At the same time, I'm not a teenager, so <laughs> uh, you know, I although I think I have a pretty good immune system and I, and my health is. I think um, I would just say very good. I just don't get sick that often, quite frankly. I don't get sick that often, but it's because... I'm going to start bringing a pillow and just fluffing it every no, time no, he fluffs I'm it I'm just up. saying, you know, I'm not a kid, and uh, I do try to... And when I don't sleep well and these things happen, uh, I do start feeling down pretty quick. Yeah. So I do need to keep myself and up. And some people were really sickly as children. Some people really, really healthy as children. Then if they were healthy as kids, they're sickly as adults. If they were sickly as kids, they're still sickly as adults. It doesn't matter. It's just about knowing where you came from, how you are, how you function as a baseline, and then dealing with it. And like even Scott bringing up rest, super important, right? If your dog is a little bit sick, Stop the walks for exercise. Stop bringing the dog in the car for all these visits. Let your dog rest. Like, this is important. If your dog at all is down and out, the first thing to do is keep the house quiet, keep everyone quiet, and let your animal rest. That is super important. Not a lot of visitors, not a lot of this, that, and the other. Just let's rest. Nutrition, great one. This is one of my go-tos with the dogs, and we don't have a ton of senior dogs right now, but I always have bone broth cubes in the freezer. Like this is a go-to for me. Immune system. We had Bam passed away at 18 since we've started this podcast. Sarge had passed away a few months before we started the podcast at probably around 13 or 14. We want our dogs to live as long as possible. You know, Jimmy and Sink are 10 and 11. We would like them to live as late into their teens as possible. That is our ultimate goal for our animals. So with bone broth, you can look it up. You can research it. I take the crock pot out. I do not eat meat. I have not eaten meat for over 12 years. I hate the smell of the house when the bone broth is cooking. I'm just going to be honest. I put, you know, 10, 12, 15 chicken necks in it. The necks make it kind of gelatinous. Shout out to Taylor Beecher for the gelatinous um, tip with that. I put some marrow bones in it. Um, I go to the butcher and I just get some actual marrow bones. I let them all go in it. Um, I put some apple cider vinegar, maybe like two capfuls. And then for 24 hours, that thing just sits. It is on low for 24 hours. The last hour, um, I'll pop it up. Maybe it starts on high and then goes to low. I'm not sure. You can look it up. But it's a 24-hour process. The house totally is filled and smells like everything. It about smells an, like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's. Yeah, home. it smells. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I can grind raw food easier than I can smell things cooking. I'm sorry. Like even once I was like, I'm not going to eat meat. I can't even eat French onion soup anymore because the beef stock makes the whole house smell like beef. So it doesn't smell great. It's not great. An hour before it's done, I put turmeric forte capsules in from standard process for more anti-inflammatory stuff. So that is a great way. Think about when you were sick when you were little, you're getting broth. Now bone broth is a new thing. I personally don't do bone broth as an adult because I don't like the taste of meat. I don't consume products like that. But for the dogs, it's really an important thing to think about. If you're normally feeding your dog just a kibble and it's sick, think about infusing some more vitamins. Do some research. Dr. Karen Becker has more information on how to help your dogs nutritionally than anyone else in the world, in my opinion. Look at some things you can do to support your dog. Super important. Yeah. And I would, uh, you know, it's a way to be proactive rather than if your dog gets sick, the natural thing to do in this country is bring him to the vet mm -hmm. and get medications for symptoms. And quite often the, the medications are even harder on the dog than than what's going on well, in the first place. Well, it just place. depends on what's going on, but sometimes the vets don't know, right? And you went to the doctor to run up a big bill and they want to help you. They're doctors. They want to help the animals. For us personally, if we have a dog, especially an older dog, a little under the weather, the last thing I want to do is bring them to a more communal place with animals at that point. So I'm not saying I'm just going to treat the dog at home and the dog isn't going to be able to get care, but maybe we'll ride it out for 24 or 36 hours, see what things are looking like, see how things are progressing, and really try to hone in on what we're dealing with. Because when the dogs get sick, and they can get sick at any age, puppies can get sick, um, you know, young dogs can get sick, elderly dogs are more prone to getting sick, and puppies are more prone to getting sick. But be thoughtful of how you're dealing with the dogs when they're those ages. Personally, when we have puppies, we carry our puppies. We are pottying them away from the vet's grass, and no offense to any vets, but most dogs going to the vet have some sort of sickness. We potty our puppies and our young, our older dogs away from the vet. And when we get there, especially puppies, we'll carry them. And if it's a really old dog and it's really small and I can carry it, I'll carry it too. The less there is with the cross-contamination of germs, the better, in my opinion. Sure. 
Yeah. And exercise, I think, is a good one. You and I both exercise decently regularly. I think it's good. It just helps to uh, put that stress on the body and then allow the body to recover, and, and it just gets stronger. And yeah. It's just part of the deal. Yeah, and it helps your dog's hearts be stronger, their lung the capacity blood circulation, be stronger. Everything. Blood circulation. Now, if they're sick, I'm not saying take them out and throw the ball and try to work it now. I'm saying as a day-to-day -day thing, when Scott's talking about the types of things him and I do, we're two different people from two very different backgrounds and at different points in our lives, but we live together, we're married, everything else, rest, nutrition, exercise, these are all things we can transfer onto our animals. And it also just makes their well-being feel better, right? Getting out to go for a walk, getting out to throw the ball, everything else. The less heavy you are, and I'm not trying to be fat phobic, I get it, like, I understand that we love people and animals of all shapes and sizes. The less heavy your dog is when it gets sick, the better your dog will likely recover. If there's a lot of stagnation in its body and a lot of inflammation and a lot of extra fat and everything else, it's going to be harder for that dog to work through getting hit with something, especially something more unusual, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and fat is the breeding ground for cancer, and cancer is a big thing with dogs, and you know, they only, they're only with us for, you know, at best, you know, 15, 18 years maybe. And a lot of dogs are getting cancer at five, six years old now. So yeah. if there's anything that I can do to, to ward off that potential problem, and if it's something as simple as keeping my dog a little bit lean, I mean, that's pretty easy to do. Yeah, and know? we're talking now... Uh, exercise would help because we don't know why there's so much canine cancer either, right? This is kind of going out of some sort of acute upper respiratory virus, but I don't think your dog getting good rest, getting well fed and getting plenty of, you know, suitable exercise for it is going to enhance your chance of it getting cancer. Let's just look at it that way. So think of these things in your day-to-day -day life to try to set your dog up to be as safe as possible when this kind of thing swipes through. All right, we're going to go to break super quick to hear Chrissy chat. And then when we get back, we're going to talk about the immune system a little bit more. Want to keep up with all the latest from the Quirky Dog Podcast like me and Murphy here? Then make sure you head on over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Or if you prefer to listen to the madness, go on over to iTunes or Spotify and follow the Quirky Dog Podcast. And hey, while you're there, leave a rating and review and let them know what you think of the show. Until then, keep it quirky. Okay, we're going to talk about a few more things that we do with our own dogs here for the second half. And one thing that's really important, and I'm not suggesting that, you know, you go by standard process on Amazon, but human chiropractors sell it, dog chiropractors sell it, a lot of Eastern vets sell it. I'm really excited about the standard process line, and we use it a lot for ourselves and for the dogs. So right now, I don't know if I sound a little bit different, maybe I'm going into a little uh, laryngitis or whatever, but I, I have a little upper respiratory thing myself. Shocking, ironic, but it's true. So I'm even taking turmeric for myself. I'm taking apple cider vinegar for myself. I'm keeping my inflammation down within my own body to get as good as I can. What we do monthly with the dogs, and I do it for about a week, I do a monthly cleanse. So um, this is just my own thing. I've gotten some guidance from my Eastern vets, and I'm not saying you do this. I'm not saying you do your own thing, but this is how thoughtful we are about what goes into our dogs. Monthly, I take um, almonds, and I grind them up in the blender. What do we have? A blend tech. It's a very yep. nice blender to do those types of things. We, I, we have a blend tech. I grind up almonds. I believe that gives me my vitamin uh, E. I have these great greens from um, an Eastern vet. It's Wild Green Supreme. It's um, pretty well sourced. It's a company out of Washington. All the dogs get a scoop of that. And then I give Cataplex C. And now I've been switching one month. I'll do a cleanse with one Cataplex C, which is basically just vitamin C. Or I'll do a cleanse with Catalin or like a multivitamin, something like that. That standard process also carries a canine immune support. Personally, with the dogs we have right now, I wouldn't just dose that monthly. But if there's something where they do get sick or something else, I would totally have a canine immune support to help boost them up. But I've been transition. I've been switching between the Cataplex C, which is just vitamin C, and the Catalin, which is more of a you know general vitamin. The, a lot of these are human supplements. They do have a canine line as well. But these are things that people are putting in their bodies to feel better, to give them nutritional support, to give them vitamin support and everything else. So start asking the questions. If you see an article pop up and you're like, that sounds like hogwash, dogs don't need that, they're just animals, that's crazy, do a little bit of research. Ask your vet. Find an Eastern vet. I mean, you we've changed a lot about what we've done, I would say, the last 10 years compared to how you used to live. I mean, mostly when you would supplement, what would you do before? Just a joint supplement? Well, I was doing a raw diet. and I just <laughs> Which gives a ton of nutrition. And I didn't really worry about supplementation. Although, yeah. uh, no, actually, 
I take that back. I was doing a lot of supplementation, but it was for performance. Yeah, yeah, I like had, to boost it. I, had, I was working my dogs hard, doing a dog sport where they were jumping and running, and I needed good endurance, and I wanted to have that edge. I wanted that dog to be healthy, recover quickly. So I was doing supplements that were geared towards that, yes. towards performance. Yeah, and that's a good point, too, because, you know, uh, um, we want our dogs to be fit, right? We're talking about fat phobic and all these things. So we want our dogs to be fit. If it's an older dog, I'm going to have a little bit extra weight on the dog. Like literally, uh, if somebody touches my dog and they're a little bit older, they may say, oh, it's a little fat. Yeah. Because if that dog gets sick and that dog doesn't eat for three days, I want that dog to be okay. Same thing for muscle mass. If an athlete gets hit really, really hard with something and they're laid up for a week, like literally laid up, not getting out of bed, Yes, their baseline compared to the average human is going to be much better than, you know, what most people would come out of the hospital after a week looking like. However, they're still going to have muscle because they had so much muscle tone. So consider these things. I'm not trying to say, you know, every Shih Tzu should be a bodybuilder, but these things do matter. This factors into overall health. And I do want to touch on, it completely can be genetic. It's not that there isn't some genetic underlying causes that create immune disorders, correct? Like if you have two parents, there was no genetic testing. Maybe they both have various genetic diseases. Maybe the dogs were recessively bred to produce the litter. Of course, your dog could come with a weakened immune system. That is not okay now to say for 10 to 15 years, oh yeah, she just has a bad immune system. Oh yeah, he just has, what can we do to build it up? What can we do to strengthen it? What can we do to save money at the vet? What can we do to get this dog living a fulfilling life for as long as possible? So really start to consider these things. Tell them about my Manuka. I need a little rest. I will. I was going to say though, with regard to the rescues, and uh, I've seen so many rescues that have... Um, immune issues that manifest themselves in skin problems, mm. patchy hair, things like that. They go to the vet, the vet's got them on something trying to f get their system straightened out. All of these products are just gonna complement whatever the vet is doing. This isn't something that is so harsh that it's gonna be a problem if it's on taking something at the vet and then getting some supplements here. You know, This uh, Manuka honey is, uh, probably many of you know about it already. Honey, unpasteurized honey is a great, thing for our immune system. It's something that's why they say on jars of honey, don't give to babies and infants because good honey is unpasteurized. That's the stuff that helps you. So Manuka honey is from Australia and it's um, supposed to be this kind of a superfood type honey. And it's extremely expensive. Uh, you know, I will say it that, the, you know, this, I'm 12 take ounce, a little spoon right this 12 ounce jar of Manuka honey is like a $50 <laughs> item. So for me, that's expensive honey. And, um, but it's meant we take it, uh, not just to sweeten, uh, some other food item, but it's actually like a medicine. Yeah, I, just, the way took, we use I it. just took a spoon of it now. And I am not going to give medical advice, check with your vets. I do personally use this with our own dogs. If need be check with your own vet before you do it. But, um, using the Manuka honey, even with the dogs topically or orally, I have done before also. So if you don't have tools like this for your dog's immune system and to help them, think about, okay, when do the kids get really stressed? When I was little, I was sick a lot. Um, I was a busy, I was go, 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 but I would always get sick around the holidays, right? There was a lot going on around the holidays. Yes, school got out, but we would be entertaining. It would be, you know, I grew up outside of Chicago. You know, maybe I was a little more cold than normal. I don't know. There was a lot of things suppressing my immune system. So be conscious of the role that stress plays on your dogs. And I'm not trying to overstep. I'm not trying to say that dogs that are exposed to more stress are going to be more sickly or anything else. However, I personally know myself that if I am down and out, stressed to the max, not sleeping well, and all my ducks are not in a row, it's, I'm way more likely to get sick. So consider that with the animals. And the only reason I bring this up, and it's not to say that every dog Scott and I ever watch, you know, is just perfect and never has any kind of respiratory virus or anything else, or diarrhea or anything. But it's probably more stressful for these dogs to leave their homes and to come into a new home and have all this environmental change happen at once than most things that happen in their life. And some of the most extreme dogs actually get strengthened by spending time with us. So just consider that because it's very easy to say, oh yeah, my dog wanted metronidazole five times last year. I haven't had to use it at all this year. It's very easy to say, oh, my dog got kennel cough every single year. 
it hasn't gotten kennel cough for three years. And be conscientious and do your research about the kennel cough vaccine and these little things that you inject into the dog and everything else. I don't know if it's, it's an oral thing. I don't know what you call that with an animal. And, and everybody can run their own places however they want because we're not doing it to that degree anymore and everyone needs to make the right choice for themselves. When we had our facility in Salisbury with a limit of 50 dogs, the only thing we required ever was a rabies cert, a, a rabies cert up to date. But besides that, it was everyone else's choices. And it is everyone's choice. But titering versus vaccinating, a dog that's over five years old, that's something that we do. These are all little things that we do. And it's not to put anyone else down as a dog owner or to overstep any advice that you've gotten from your vet, but just have a well-rounded approach. I mean, we work with I'd say, what, six professionals for animals? I mean, a lot of people. Yeah, we have all kinds of uh, <clears throat> we have a staff. people that we, <laughs> we have, consult I don't even have a doctor right now. My NP just retired, <laughs> but our dogs have everything. I did want to back up a little bit to talk about boarding dogs, and, and one issue is the GI issues, which uh, we've, we've had many dogs in, and we had one in fairly recently that came in with a probiotic that the dog gets every day for this loose stool, but it wasn't really helping. And... Uh, the dog was with us, had no, no problems with loose stool for a week. And that's, to me, that's just a sign of stress in that home environment, whether... Or instability or whatever anxiety, the dog whatever is, you want to call it. Yeah, the, the way the dog is perceiving its environment is creating so much internal stress that it has a loose stool all the time. It has, it's being over, you know, overrun by its own fear. Whatever it is going on there, I don't know what the dog is thinking. But I do know that when they get put into a structured lifestyle, they just calm down. And then you'll see that stool becomes firmer yeah. and more normal. Everything starts to become more normal. And maybe it's much less about, I feel like sometimes people <clears throat> get this vision on the podcast that we're blaming all the external stuff. So maybe it's less that the external stuff wasn't as much of an indicator, but the internal stuff. So maybe once the dog knows, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Oh, I'm not supposed to do this. Oh, I don't have to just run down the street out of my mind not knowing where I'm going. Maybe once the dog doesn't have as many options in his or her head and it has a clearer path of where it's supposed to go, maybe that's what helps. We're not sure what helps, but the dogs do get better and we see it day in, day out. So it is worth mentioning and telling you guys about because we want to see all your animals as happy and as healthy and as well forever and as, for as long as they can possibly be, honestly. Yeah, a lot. We see the same thing with humans. You have yeah. a lot of anxiety. People have a lot of GI problems. The stomach is the first thing that gets upset when you have stress. You don't know how to deal with the situation. Yeah, you People can have panic eating. attacks. You, you, you're yeah. depressed. You don't eat. Like, there's a lot of... There's, Very similar <laughs> we, situations. Yeah, you want to you talk mental health, come on up and be our buddy. Like, we literally, these you guys, like, just consider these different things. And I want to say one more thing on this topic because... We don't know enough about this outbreak that's happening in New England with the new strain of the upper respiratory virus, and hopefully it passes quickly and it just starts looking like the normal kennel cough and everything else. If you are rescuing an animal, whether it be a puppy or a dog or a cat, or I don't care what it is, from anywhere in New England or anywhere really in general, if that dog is not healthy, please do me a favor, and this is no offense to you, but please do me a favor and legit say, hey, can you just get my dog healthy first? Because... It, please do not take a sick puppy or a sick dog from someone, especially if you've purchased it. Same thing goes for a breeder. Exact same thing goes for a breeder. If your dog is unwell upon seeing it, then make sure that everything's all set before you take it into your hands because that is the responsibility, in my opinion, of the breeder to be giving you a healthy eight-week-old, nine-week-old, 10-week-old puppy. That is the responsibility of the rescue to be doing this backtrack and everything else. Like, please just do this as a favor to me if you are a frequent listener and you're bringing a new animal into your house. It's not that you can't have that animal, but just say, hey, like, could you go have this <clears throat> cough looked at? Could you go have this diarrhea looked at? Could you go have this looked at? Because if it's just hot potato and now it's your problem to fix, how heartbreaking would it be if you get this new rescue and it's first week of its life, you lose it. That's not why you want to get a dog. So just be conscious of those little things. Well, I will say, you know, that not everyone has that option. Uh, I just recently picked up a client where they, when they got their dog, it was just right off the bus, had been driven up from the south, and there's, you know, 25 dogs in a van, and they're just handing them out, be at this and spot, you get the dog. those dogs, before they came up, should have been checked out. Regardless, they got a dog that had some issues. And what I would say is, if you have a dog already at home, a senior dog, maybe you want to get a younger dog, keep that new dog separate from the older dog, 
pottying in a different yard until you know that dog's Look at healthy. A different yard. He's not, learned so much. So, so that you know that dog is healthy and not going to give your old dog something bad. Yeah, and that's a great thing that Scott brought up, and I'm so glad. And this is a great closing thought because we love to talk about poop on the podcast. Pet dogs are never where our dogs are, ever. Never been the case. <laughs> no matter what our situation is, our dogs potty in their own area, and the pet dogs have either another yard, multiple other yards, whatever else. We are very conscious of where our animals are and what they're interacting with. And that doesn't mean that they're not training where other dogs are training, but if there's going to be a, a the mass of dog shit from all the pet dogs in one area, and yes, it gets cleaned up and everything else, but there's still specs. Guys, if you don't know how germs act, then go do some research. But there's still things on the gravel. Even if I sanitize the yards three times a week, there's still a chance of it. Our dogs are not near it. So it's not that we're sending pet home, pet dogs home sick. We care about them less. But one, it stops the spread. And two, we really, 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 really value the health of our animals. We love our dogs a lot. That's the bottom line. Yeah. And if you're getting a rescue, you know, off of a bus where you're not just going to leave the dog on the bus to go somewhere else and you've got your heart set on this dog, you probably are that dog's best bet. Take that dog and get them healthy and spend but some bring time it, getting plan them straightened to, out. If you weren't told to, plan to bring them to the vet within the first few days. And also, hopefully, they're giving you records from the South when that vet came up and you can compare what everybody's finding. We're not trying to be all down in the dumps, but we got this new upper respiratory thing floating around New England. We want to give you the most information possible. And just be conscious of these things. Consider these types of things because your normal pet dog owner isn't thinking this way. And this is like how we always function. Like, do you think I should do bone broth and greens and canine immune for him now? Or what do you think I should do? Like, we're constantly talking about this kind of stuff. So just be thoughtful of it. If you haven't ever used an immune supplement for your dog, look for something. There's a lot of good Dr. Harvey's products. There's a lot of good products out there. I'm not trying to push what we do, but ask. And a lot of Western vets right now have a holistic or an Eastern vet where they can give you more support towards these things. And if you're, if you really need a daycare situation right now because of your work life and it's something you've been doing, uh, an alternative to that is getting a, a dog walker for a cert, yes, short 100%, period of time. 100%. Keep keep your dog pulled out of that uh, dog take it, daycare, especially if they've sent an email to you saying, "Don't come." <laughs> you know, we got some issues with this thing. You know, they don't want to go out of business. They they need dogs to come in at the same time. They have a moral obligation to let you know, "Hey, this virus is buzzing around here." Yeah, and the sooner so it spreads through, the just better get a, off. Just get a dog walker if you can that can come in and take your dog out to pee once or twice a day while you're at work and. Hopefully this thing will, you know, just pass within a month or so, you know? Yeah. All right. We'll let you know if we hear anything else about it. Next week is our last installment of Noel's year-long series. Woo! It's been a big year. All right, you guys. Uh, it was great chatting with you today. Keep your dogs healthy. I'm going to keep getting healthy and keep it quirky. <coughs> Take See care. you guys. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.